awkward listeners. This is day two of our time spent at the InsureTech Insights USA 2023 conference. Once again, do not plan on skipping through this episode because we have another fantastic group of guests for you with a wrap up at the end with Jeff Shi, where we catch his insights on the future of InsureTech. All right, let's dive back in. I'm Dustin Bryant, Personal Lines Academic Director and host of Awkward Insurance Podcast from the National Alliance for Insurance Education and Research. And we are recording live from InsureTech Insights New York 2023 conference. And I'm not even going to ask you who you are because I already know who you are. This is like, what's how many times have you been on the podcast now? Is this I the think second? officially only my second. Only your second? Seriously? So we have Garrett Drogi. I know how to say your name. Nobody else does. You nailed it. <laughs> and he's here at InsureTech Insights with us today. And I am so excited. Thank you for taking the risk of getting awkward with us. Once again, you were a speaker here today. Give me one awkward take other than that the tech just failed at a tech conference. The most (laughs) awkward tech failure, yeah. Well, at the end of, at the beginning of the session, I asked people if they think the metaverse is is BS or not. Yeah. And most of the room raised their hand yes. They think it's BS? Yeah. yeah, Oh, wow. And that's always How's that make you feel? I'm okay with it. But the point that I make throughout the presentation is... It doesn't matter what you think. 51% of the metaverse users are 13 and younger. Yeah. Right? So it's Gen Z. And they don't care what you think. That's what they want. 65% of them want to communicate online versus in real life. So you can think that's weird. They don't. Yeah. So I'm sitting here just hearing that, thinking from just an agency perspective for a second. And maybe I'm in my 40s. Maybe I'm in my 50s, 60s. Because right now we've got some of the oldest generations in insurance at the moment. We've got one of the oldest industries at the moment. Why do I care about 13-year-olds wanting to play in the metaverse? Because they're going to be 25, 32, 45 in no time. Yeah. And when I got into the industry, probably similar to you, you know, 2007, I remember having a board meeting about, I called a meeting to say, what's our social media strategy? What are we going to do? And basically got laughed out of the room. And now the number one word in Google AdWords and Facebook is insurance. Yeah. So every, you don't doubt insurance's importance in social media. Same is true for the metaverse. It's just another channel and you will be advertising in it. So you might as well start now while it's cheap. While it's cheap, because it's not going to be cheap forever. One of the team members here with me today, she actually had the opportunity to sit in on your panel uh, or on your, you didn't have a panel. It was all Garrett. All keynote. It, oh, it was all <laughs> Garrett. And uh, the metaverse, you mentioned something about DEI. The metaverse is built for DEI. Talk more about that. Like, I've not heard it. So spill it all out. Okay. Well, so the idea is in the metaverse, everybody's welcome. You can be whatever avatar you want to project out into the world. Black, white, male, female. You should see my husband's avatar. He has I'd love some to. kind of like disco dude yeah, on disco's a unicorn. Yeah, disco's a big disco unicorns. That's on a, a thing. A For sure. Pumpkin heads, <laughs> zombie clowns. Oh my gosh. Everybody parties together in the metaverse. And that's important to Gen Z because they are the most ethnically diverse generation we've ever had. So. That's why DEI is hard-coded in the metaverse. Yeah, because you can just represent whatever part of yourself that you need to represent. Be who you want to be. Yeah. So being here at InsureTech Insights, what's one of the reasons why you needed to come here and speak in InsureTech about metaverse stuff? These are the innovators who are going to build the products for the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And part of my presentation is to challenge those people to stop waiting on the sidelines. Don't wait for 10 years for other people, for your competitors to figure this out. And they will. So things like smart contracts, blockchain, you need to start experimenting with that today. Yeah. So when you're talking, you're sitting here talking about, you've got to start dabbling in it now. You've got to see what the problems are and start finding solutions. Give me some advice on when somebody, an agent or somebody is sitting down and saying, this is a problem. I don't have a solution for this with XYZ carrier or a legacy carrier. I need some tech. How do you see a problem and go... How do I fix this? And then move from fix, like you freaking just developed Web3 Labs with IMA Financial. How did you go from there's an issue here or there's an opportunity here into actualization? 
How did you bring it into fruition and give it life? Well, if you look where we started with Web3 Labs, which was we bought virtual land and built an R&D facility there. We didn't quite know what we were going to do with it. Right. And there was a cost there, but it wasn't huge. I think that's the barrier for most people. It's like, it's going to cost so much money. Right. We don't have in-house developers. You're and, right. I think that probably is that, barrier that's number what one, it is. is they assume that they're taking a risk by putting money into something that they don't know is going to work. But isn't that everything? Isn't that every piece of insure tech that people are here selling? is like, we can Isn't that change. the first insurance policy ever? That's right. <laughs> I mean, for this crowd, you're selling a promise that might or might not happen in the future, right? Yeah. That's what an insurance policy is. That's all an insure tech platform is doing. We can solve that problem down the road. So talking about taking risks and in terms of success, like you're a hot commodity right now in terms Very of the imagination <laughs> and the stuff that is, I think I've said it a thousand times. And I know you've heard me say it. If I could just crack open your brain and see what's in there. Yeah, I'm starting like, to worry about you when you say that. Your brain is so beautiful. It's just got so <laughs> many. Right, juice. So oftentimes, a... <laughs> many think that a high level of success comes with high stakes advances and you've been wildly successful i don't know for how long but i mean you've been on my radar for over a year at this point and you're just constantly coming up with new ideas and new ways to say things but that's not all there is so tell me about one time where success came easier than you expected it to be or is this it like it's just one happenstance after another where you're like holy crap how'd i get here no i fail nine out of ten times i love that i think you have to i'll say i Success found me when I stopped trying to follow all these other playbooks that other people have written of like, here's how you do that. Because we all want, I don't, how can I be a successful salesperson or whatever? And you read how someone else did it. It's a terrible way to build your own strategy. So I threw the book out the window and was like, I'm not going to try some technique on somebody. It makes me feel inauthentic. I can't be me. Right. I'm just going to be me. Yeah, and I am for some people and I'm very much not for a lot of people. And that's OK. I'm so glad you're for me. I am for you <laughs> until you, you keep... try and crack open my brain. <laughs> right now, who do I have with me? Wesley Pergamon from Sola Insurance. So you are actually a pretty hot name around here right now. I had another guy coming up. He kind of stalks our booze a little bit came up and he was like, I don't really pay much attention to last names, so I'm just going to call him Wesley Pomegranate. <laughs> Do you I've get gotten that? that? I've, gotten that. <laughs> I've gotten Pomegranate. I've gotten pregnant. Uh, <laughs> I hope you haven't gotten pregnant. <laughs> That's yeah. awkward. I've heard uh, permanent, uh, peppermint. <laughs> and what company are you here representing? Sola Insurance. We are a supplemental natural disaster carrier. A supplemental natural disaster carrier, otherwise yeah. known as... Parametric insurance coverage. Yeah. Yes. Nobody knows that. <laughs> Nobody knows that word, though. Well, thanks so much for taking the risk of getting awkward with me about insurance today. <laughs> I am looking at you, and you are like the youngest person I think we have interviewed. <laughs> we don't have to go into particulars of your age, but I am actually really astounded to see such a young CEO. How long have you been a CEO? Yeah. Of- so I've been doing this for uh, about two years now at Sola. So it's been a great opportunity. I come from more of a tech background but also did have a stint at a flood insurance company uh, where I was working on some FEMA disaster maps, private flood models, and ultimately realized that all of this natural disaster data after these events was telling us exactly where the most damaged areas are. And I just realized, why can't we use this data to automate payouts and get people the money that they need? Like, we don't care about whether they have $20,000 in damage or $3 million. If we know that there's some damage, why can't we just give them some money right away to cover what they need? Yeah. So that's where the idea of solo is kind of born from that's where the idea of solo comes from and what astounds me the most is that i have those same thoughts of why can't we just do this and i just go to bed (laughs) and you're like why can't we just do this and you're like i'm gonna create something for that is that how that happened yeah i've i've loved startups for the longest time ever since i I was going to i love going to hackathon events which were these like technology kind of conferences where you like work on a project for 24 hours so, I mean, I, it, was, it was more of just like natural disasters were super fascinating to me and insurance was this interesting like financial vehicle to be able to help people recover. And yeah, there's this just this whole claims process related to like first notice of loss, adjusters going back and forth and thought that like we could use our product to like automate those payouts because there is data that tells us exactly where these damaged areas are. Yeah, that's nuts. So you did the startup. Give me an awkward take or an awkward summary of what Sola does for folks. <laughs> like, 
So we know that it's parametric coverage. Yeah. We're going to catch you a check as soon as a, a loss happens. Tell me about Sola. So we have our uh, tornado crisis insurance policy uh, that covers up to $15,000 in the event of an EF5 for homeowners and small businesses. So the way that agents actually sell our product and are really excited by what's going on is, as I'm sure you know, I mean, carriers pulling out of states like California and Florida or going insolvent, and now this is trickling into the Midwest and Southeast where deductibles used to be 300 or $500, and now right. they're 3000 or $5,000. I mean, we were just talking to an agent the other day who said that their home was covered for a replacement cost for a 15-year-old roof, and now just a year later, it's like 12-year-old roof, actual cash value, 10-year-old right. roof, and the coverage. But I mean, yeah, we're, we're seeing like just a lot of insurance companies restrict their coverage on climate change rather than expand it. And so agents see us as a really exciting opportunity to help plug that gap uh, and, and help pay for that deductible or immediate expenses after these events. So Flood Flash uses sensors, which I kind of <laughs> got in his business a little, day, uh, little yesterday. I was like, does it float away when the flood comes? He's like, no, we figured it out. Okay, cool. But I've also heard that there are other parametric companies out there where they've got wind sensors, like if the wind is, you know, X miles per and then you can get some money. But the problem is, is that the wind comes and it takes the sensor with it. What kind of data do you use to trigger yes. your coverage? Uh, so we work with the National Weather Service to get our data. Um, and what's super interesting is they'll actually go out and survey the area and create kind of this damage map of the tornado. And so as a result, I mean, there are different offices, National Weather Service offices in right. pretty much every state. Yeah. And so they'll actually go out and go on a house by house basis. So what's really nice about kind of our parametric product is we can create, make it so that it's very highly correlated with the actual indemnity claims that are in an area. So rather than just... This is AFLAC for your home, yeah, basically. exactly. That's how a lot of uh, <laughs> agents talk about it. <laughs> That's amazing. Most awkward thing that you've encountered since you've been doing this? <laughs> Where do I start? It would probably be our first, the first big eye conference that I went to. All right, because I just it. I did not know like how insurance agents worked or, or what it really was. You and sound I, like you know how they work now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, it was just such a it's such a great community of people uh, that were super tight knit, very all very friendly. So uh, what actually happened is uh, my co-founder, me and Braden, ended up going to California uh, to meet with some investors and. Um, and Jeff was going to come with us, our other co-founder, he's our CTO. And he's like, no, I need to figure out this agent channel. And he actually, we, he didn't go, he come with us to California. He flew to the Ozarks and went to a big eye conference. And he's like, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm like, what do, what do you mean? He was like, why? <laughs> and then I ended up going to the Alabama Young Agents Conference with him. Um, and it's the just, Young Agents Conferences oh, are always the best. Oh, yeah. Like, um, amazing. So I, I recommend to anyone who's trying to launch a new insurance product, like insurance agents are the best. Co I mean, no, no, no normal person wants to talk about insurance. No homeowner wants to talk about insurance. So yeah. as you're trying to figure out how to go to market and, and really understand where your product fits in in the insurance yeah. world, I mean, agents are on the front lines talking to You need the to know who you're selling world, it to. So. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why startup tech companies fail the most, in my opinion, is that they're building a product for something that they see as a problem, but they don't really understand who they're selling this product to and they miss the mark. That's right. And then when they go to try and pitch it, they don't know the language to use. They yeah. don't know how to hit it the right way. Now, I love this. One final question. What is one piece of advice for a young person who may either be um, in our educational programs or thinking about joining our educational programs to just get into this business yeah i mean i would just tend towards things that you naturally find interesting like i mean we were talking to an actuary who's like trying to figure out whether he wants to go in like pnc or life and annuity and i was like talking to him about a program and he's like i love natural disasters or i was like there you go like follow the property path right now who do i have with me uh, you have adam wacker Adam Wacker. And yep. what company are you with or why are you here in New York? I'm not with any company right now. I, I left my last employer in April. And so I'm just here networking. InsureTech Insights is an event I've known about for a couple years. I've been to ITC in Vegas. Okay. And so I was decided it'd be a good time to come out and network. Wow. So where are you from? Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. Yep. And you came all the way to New York yeah. to network. Yeah. And it wasn't as much of a hurdle as one might think. Well, thanks for sitting down and taking the risk to get awkward about insurance today. So we're on day two of the conference. I kind of got to know you a little bit yesterday yeah. and you said you were job seeking. You just mentioned that to us just now. 
So tell me about how yesterday went. Did you have yeah. interviews? Like what, what happened yeah. on the floor? I had a couple meetings over here in the networking space. Um, those were good. Really a lot of introductory conversations, but honestly, some of my best conversations about jobs have been the ones that are unplanned. The ones where I'm sitting at the lunch table and I'm talking with someone, learning about their business operations. Like just the other day, I talked with a consulting company. They're in the technology space and they really want people with an insurance background. So that started a conversation that's going to lead to another conversation I'm going to have here shortly. Had a phone interview with a company that I met with yesterday. A phone interview at a conference. Yes, yes, I had a phone interview. So I met with one person that led to another call because, you know, these are the people that, you know, they can start a conversation, but then you have the you got to have a process with the hiring interviews. And so, uh, but really it's just about having a conversation. And so I've been learning a lot about the space, learning a lot about new opportunities and it's really best is just meeting new people. And so yeah. it's not just about job seeking, but just building relationships because uh, that's what these events are for. Yeah. It sounds like the less you've tried, the more successful you've been because you said you had some interviews earlier, but you found the most success just sitting down trying yep. to eat something. Yeah. So you said that yesterday was probably your most awkward day. Give me one awkward take from yesterday. I met with one guy who said this was a bad idea coming here. Oh, yeah. Well, that's in this not space. Awkward. Well, no. but then I have another person, the people who supported me out here, and this is the best use of my time. So he thought it was a bad idea for you to yeah. come here looking for a job. Yeah, that was awkward. Oh man, sounds like somebody doesn't know the opportunities that are in front yep. of them. Who do I have with me right now? Let's start with you. Well, I'm Rick McCatherine. I'm the president and CEO of Hippo Insurance. Yes, you are. And who else? And I'm Aviad Pinkovetsky. I'm the president of First Connect, a Hippo subsidiary, and a longtime Hippo as well. Yes. I am so excited to have you guys here. I've been waiting for this particular episode all day long. You're actually one of our board members at the National Alliance as well. I am, and it's something I'm actually very proud of because I do think it's an opportunity to give back to the industry. Yes. Because I think the National Alliance does everything it can do to educate people within the insurance industry and excited to be a part of it. Yeah. So we had somebody on earlier who insures whales and you guys insure hippos. It's really a zoo of insurance around here. I'm, I'm just you know, just going to go ahead and say it. There's zebras, there's hippos, there's rhinos, there's whales, whatever it is. Right. Awkwardly, a little bit. Tell me a little bit about hippo insurance. Well, you know, at Hippo, we, we, we have a really, really simple mission, and that's to protect the joy of home ownership. We're really about holistic home protection and really trying to keep small things from becoming big problems. So our company exists really to partner with customers that want an advocate to help them protect their greatest asset, the place they raise their family, something that really means home to them. A holistic point of view on home ownership. That's right. Can you explain that a little bit? I can, because when people think Hippo's a home insurance product or home insurance company, my answer is no, we're not. Home insurance is the backstop when everything goes wrong. But what happens before things go wrong? Think about it. What's the best claims experience? And it's never having that claim. So it's super important for us to partner with customers on proactive and prevention to try to avoid those claims from happening in the first place. So we do it through a combination of high-tech IoT devices and home health checkups. We do it with a home health app that gives each customer a home health score and gives them tips on what they can do to protect their home. Now I see where the holistic point of view comes in is you just went through a whole doctor's like exam. It's soup to nuts, a- <laughs> soup to nuts. So how does the integration of smart home devices and data analytics actually benefit homeowners and in turn HIPPO? Yeah, think about it. Think about if your homeowner's insurance company had some data to tell you that your hot water heater was getting ready to rupture. And let's say that hot water heater was on the second floor. Those are the worst claims. Like horrible. And you always know it happens at the most inconvenient times. Right. right? It's Thanksgiving. Your in-laws are in town. Right. And maybe when it ruptures, it ruptures on the grand piano or whatever you may have. Right. And now suddenly you have a water feature in your house that you didn't pay for. That's right. It's not an intentional waterfall for sure. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And so wouldn't it be great, though, if your home insurance company or your home protection company said, look, That hot water heater is 15 years old. It's about to fail. The last time we did a checkup, it was very clear that this thing was going to fail. Let's go ahead and get somebody out there to fix it before it breaks. Yeah. It's a win-win. It's a win for the customer. They don't have anything damaged in an inconvenient time. And it's a win for us because that's one less claim that we have to pay for. You know, I really like that Hippo's got this perspective of we're going to help you understand when you might need to maintain your home. No, you're 100% right. And Think about it. 
most people know things that are about to go wrong in their house. They kind of see it, but they don't really know who to call, who to partner with. Are they going to call Bob the plumber? And who knows if Bob shows up? Is Bob vetted? Is Bob going to do something that you really don't want him doing in your house? So if you have a trusted partner that can actually help you solve those solutions through an app, think about it as, a, as an Uber for um, home services. Right. You have a problem, you go to the app, you select the pro, the pro shows up, you immediately follow up with a how did the pro do, and what happens if that pro didn't meet your expectations? Hippo will give you a call and say, hey, look, it looks like you gave Bob a, a three-star and not a five-star. What did they What did they fail to do to meet your expectations? Yeah. And then we'll send somebody else out to fix it if Bob didn't fix it properly. It's all about partnering with the customer. I need a hippo in my house right now. Everybody needs a hippo in their house. <laughs> I need a hippo in my house. So you guys are currently offering exclusively homeowners insurance in a, in a great swatch of states. Do you have any plans to add additional lines? I've heard some rumors with some parametric coverage. To answer your question quickly, the answer isn't. You can't be all things to all people. Right. And we're not trying to do that at Hippo. We're not trying to, to boil the ocean. We have a comprehensive um, home care product that very much takes care of the customer. But that customer is going to ask for other things. We have an agency at Hippo, so we can cross sell or let's say it's a homeowner's policy in an area that we're overly concentrated. We're happy to offer other people's products, and that's one of the areas that First Connect comes in. Right. So First Connect is the agency within Hippo, correct? It, yeah. First Connect is the platform that brings carriers to bear so Hippo can sell other people's products. Yeah. I love that. So, Rick, you had a topic that you spoke on today, and it touched on customer expectations as it relates to InsurTech. So how is your consumer education, or maybe lack thereof, factored into Hippo's consumer-centric approach? So when somebody's going direct to a company like Hippo, where do they get their consumer education from to know what they have on their app? Yeah, so, so just to address the Hippo in the room to begin with, <laughs> I love just it. so everybody's clear, Hippo does not only write policies direct to consumer. Right. Hippo's view is let's meet customers where they are. And this is something that Aviad brought up years ago mm -hmm. um, when I joined Hippo. And if a customer wants to come to Hippo direct to consumer, we're happy to oblige. Yeah. But many of our customers come to Hippo via independent agents mm -hmm. or embedded partnerships. I love that you've got each one of those channels because super the important. consumer needs to be met where they're at and there's a space for all of them. That's right. And it, it's super important because customers are past the point where any company in any sector can tell them how they need to interact with their company. Customers will tell you how they want to interact and, and the company's job is to solve it. I like that. So this is generally, like I said, that's generally where the agents are going to say we're the consumer and that's where I want to bring Aviad into the conversation. So let's uh, pivot just a little bit to the distribution channel that is First Connect. And they distribute, correct my language if, if I get any of this wrong, but I understand that independent agents can access HIPPO through First Connect Insurance, right? Correct, correct. This is exactly one of the...